No man can do great and enduring work for the Lord without being a man of prayer. Let me say this again. No man can do a great and unenduring work for God who is not a man of prayer. And no man can be a man of prayer who doesn't give much time to pray. If you want to be a man of prayer, don't to be a man of prayer. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, if you want to be a person of prayer, be intentional and allocate quality time to prayer. All through my life of being in church, I have observed one thing. God has us prayer. God, my neighbor, God. Ask us prayer. It may be today. It may be now. It may be tomorrow. It may be some other day. But that prayer will be responded. So we are looking at a call in this camp. When God calls you to do something for Him, if you're writing like this, is not calling you to succeed. If God is calling you, number one, if God is calling to do something for Him, He is not always calling you to succeed. He is calling you to obey. Number God has not called you to do everything. He has called you to do what He has called you to do. So if you're going to succeed, you must be ready to obey. Now, the success of the calling of God that is upon your life is not your standard, it is His standard. So your success is up to Him, not to everyone around you. God, when God calls you to sit on this base data, your success is in obeying, doing what he has called you to do. Not what everyone else thinks you should be doing on that, on that jitter. So the calling, or the success of the calling, it is up to God. That is why we are going to be amazed in heaven. When people we thought were celebrities on earth are not celebrities in heaven. Because the success of the calling, it is up to God. Not you, not my pastor, not my mother, not my sister. Because those have never called me. The one who has called me has instructions displayed and relayed before me on what I must do for me to be found faithful and successful before him. If I call you to do something for me, it doesn't matter how other people look at it. But as long as me that is calling you, I'm satisfied you are successful. Tingamira you have a neighbor. When God is calling you, He's not calling you for everyone. He's calling you for Himself. So you assignment, the first assignment for everyone that desires to pursue the call is to obey. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, God will use you. Let me say this again. God has not called us to be excellent, ladies and gentlemen. The measure of God is calling not about excellence. He has called you to be faithful. If God expects you to meet him every day at 5 a.m., that is what he considers you to be faithful. If God tells you to give him 40 days in prayer, from today until when the 40 days are done, if you don't begin today, you will not be found faithful before God. 
I remember some time back, the Lord had called me to give him 40 days in prayer and fasting. And my prayer during that time was telling God, Lord, I want to be different from my family members. Now, the Lord told me, give me 40 days in prayer and fasting. And I'm going to sing you out from this family. And after I've singled you out, you are going to call them and you speak to them and they want to listen. I was in senior six vacation, I think. So I began to pray for my family. So when I began for days in prayer, on day 23, they called us for a talk out. And then, and I told God, now what should I come at one day? <laughs> the main reason was not because I was sick, really. It was because this outing was so good, it was not to miss. And people who know me, I love talk. So, this guy is inviting me, so we went hard talk. So, then I told God, after talk, I'm beginning again. Tomorrow, day 24. So, as I woke up to bring the moon, the Lord told me, the 23 days after they begin from day one again. Because he has told you to give him 40 days, knew that invitation for God will come. Let me tell you something. My neighbor, he knows everything about you. So he knows that good vibe, that, that good God that is going to come around Garden City or Oasis Mall, where you come from in your village. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is why God has never called you to be excellent. He has called you to be faithful. Imagine I have to count six seven days for God to give me a platform of authority in my family. And which later again, but it was at the price of not obeying for that. I, I wish I would not get any power. But God is a master of God. Hallelujah. So God has called us to be faithful. If God gives an instruction, that is your instruction, not your family instruction. Because what happens when in the days of seeking God at, our, at an early age, some instructions are going to be difficult for our parents to understand. There are moments I will be fasting and my mother will not understand why I am always fasting. So I have to devise means of carrying food to my bedroom as if I'm going to eat, but I'm not going to eat. Because I don't want to break my covenant and my vow and my commitment to God of seeking Him in my days of seeking Him. Because sometimes it is not easy to explain to everyone around you what you are doing for God and with your God. Some will never understand. So there must be a man and a woman in this place who must come up with a resolution to seek God diligently, whatever it takes. I remember I was in Nukumoji. So they invited him to speak. And the Lord told me, please, Pastor Solomon, don't speak difficult things. I remember this, the communication very clear. Just go and teach those people how to spend an hour in prayer. So I came on the pulpit and I began to relate. How does a kid, or by then those kids were between the ages of P5 and senior 4. Teach them how do they spend an, an hour in prayer. So I began to prepare them. The next morning, the, after that evening, these kids went back to their home. It was just a church in Nokonji. They had gone to the missions. Now these kids, because the word was so, it was a quickening from the Lord, it also prompted many people to respond to it immediately. So those kids went, we know how village life can be. So the only safest place to seek God was either the farm where the cows were or the banana plantations. So they knew the best time to be alone was a time when everyone is having a meal at home. So around 7 p.m., the kids, primary five, six, seven, senior one, senior two, they went in different homes, they went to plantations to just practice how do you spend an hour in prayer with God. Today, from those kids, they are pilots, I met them recently, <laughs> they are engineers, they are doctors, they are pastors, men and women that God has made. Let me tell you something. God can make you. Oh. God can make you. You can't 
make yourself. But you need to avail yourself at a place where God can't make you. It is God who raises people. It is God who ordains men. Men can only commission what God has ordained. Because I knew the call of God upon my life before Apostle Iris will meet me. All he had to do was to commission me into what God had ordained me to walk into. The government never, your pastor cannot ordain you. Your mother cannot ordain you. Your bishop cannot ordain you. God ordains men commission. Hello? When your pastor steps here and says, I think the Lord wants to. You can be maybe a youth leader, a youth pastor, maybe a worshiper. It is already in you. The pastor, God gives us grace to see what you can see immediately. Or to open your eyes to a season you thought was going to come 20 years from now. And God is it is now. So what the pastor does, because it's in the spirit, he tells you, come and do this. And as you respond, what is in you begins to rise up and manifest. So I'm not talking to you because you are young. I'm addressing your spirit being because I know the call of God is on you. I know it. I know God is going to use you in every field, in the marketplace, in churches, in different nations. When God calls a man, in many ways he seems to let other people do things which he will not let you do. Grandma, neighbor, God, if God calls you, he will, he will introduce you to his own system of making you. So there are things God can allow other people to do, but he will never allow it to do them. That is why to some of us, it is okay to even be on your phone in church. To another person, God gave them a strict instruction, never be on your phone in church. To another person, it is okay to lie, lie. To another neighbor, it is okay to lie, lie. You know, God, well, thank you. This was very costly. To another person, it is okay to lie, God told him never grieve me by lying. So you need to understand the parameters at which you operate at as an individual. What does God permit you to do that may be alive to other people of your days, but not to you? There are people I know in this life who God has refused to watch television. I know them and I've met them. Think about it, God telling you, do not watch TV. Yeah, God tells you this afternoon. What if God tells you to stop watching that song? Will you obey? Yes. I remember one day, I loved the Anikati Kalakata. <laughs> Anikati. I would even escape from church. There are moments I would not even go to church on a Wednesday because I knew Wednesday was going to be there. I had to Zahara Toto because she could be here. One day I was there and the Lord told me to stop watching Anikati Kalakata. Why me? My idea, and the cat had become an ugly dog for me. But the day I told God, Lord, I'm allowed. Even if I'm at home at seven, I can't watch it. I didn't come and ask him when you go and go to our I'll take you to you. But still, even before they chased him away from that, you know what time? I had stopped. Because it was to me. But I know people here who watch and can be cut, and there are many here. And God has never told you anything about Anikata. It is okay for you. But to me, he said, stop. That's why it needs to be called of God. There are things God will allow other people, but not you. There are people God will allow to put on trousers, and those who God will say, never put on trousers again. I have seen it. Now you can start to take a long time when I come and get my hand back. No more, you will never again. Hello, Gamma never will come and get a chingo to ask for. Okay, let me give an interview.
interesting scenario. In the book of Judges, chapter 13, well, we all know that story of Samson. I imagine, I enjoy, you know, sipping and, you know, tasting this honey. Why would the honey, not fermented the honey, the original one? It is very good and tasty. But God is coming to the mother of Samson and is telling, please, this child you're going to give back to is only to feed on locusts. Now, think about locusts in Ziggy. Since any, the girl neighbor, since any, in Ziggy. Kubanga Bible, God can send an army of locusts and they can sweep an entire field. We see it as Zidia Moody Nesimara or Zianonia or Korea. No movies. Name me name Bejia. Name me name Beji. I want to buy a wish you. I think I will come and have a cause. The government will come as a post of the moon. Name the Vivari at the city of Ria. Hallelujah. They are Kirizopola, the city of Kiriza. Now, the calling is so particular. That God wants to deal with you personally, not with your mother, not with your pastor, not with your bishop, neither with me. There are instructions God can give you, the number you see will come. But you know from the bottom of God that is God speaking to you. And that is why when you choose to follow God, you cannot obey another man. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know of people who, are, who can brag about their success, their work, their writings, but the Holy Spirit will not allow you to brag about what He has used to do. There are people, there's a day, let me tell you something. There's a day I was at church, and uh, the Lord, my, my pastor, Pastor Timon, had told me to speak in a service. So I was at work, you know, when you're working and serving, it's a bit difficult, very difficult, because. Sometimes you lack time to concentrate fully on God. Now they are called me at midday and asking me to preach in the midweek service on the next day. Three hours, four hours from that time. I was busy working. So I drive from work, go to forest mall and pack. And I lock myself in the car and begin to worship. But I'm telling God, Lord, speak to me, give me a direction. I want I don't want to speak like a normal man. I mean, this is what I do at church. These people will tell you. When, I, when I'm speaking, because I don't know whether this is the only opportunity that I will ever speak at my church. So if I'm doing it, God must speak to me and give me a word. And I'm in Basile Shua Ambula. I see Musi Jikwa, I'm in Basile Shua Ambula. So, but that day, the Lord told me, just go. So I go to church, and as I begin to share, the Lord visits us. It was at such a moment of spirit. And then, as I try to step out of the pulpit, the Lord tells me, do not do anything. Run to your car and drive.